Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Petrol supply is what we're discussing right now, and hype man are hopeful for lesser price as NNPL, NNPCL takes the back seat. NNPC Group Chief Executive Officer Mele Kiari described the removal of fuel subsidies as a transformative step in curbing cross-border smuggling, which was driven by the price differential between Nigeria and its neighboring countries. Kerry explained that before the subsidy removal, well, smugglers profited from the lower fuel prices in Nigeria compared to higher prices in nearby countries, making smuggling highly lucrative. With the subsidy removal, fuel prices have equalized, reducing the profitability of smuggling and promoting fair pricing for customers across the region. Now, our guest today is Damilare Oyilola. He's an energy expert and is just going to share his thoughts with us this morning. Good morning, Damilare. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm fantastic, thank you. How are you? I'm very good this morning. All right, so we're talking petrol supply, we're talking prices, we're talking smuggling, there's just a lot. But let's start, let's begin with a statement from um, the from Mele Kerry, who is the CEO of the NNPCL. Now, he's talking about smuggling and saying that the reason why um, smugglers were able to profit was because of the price in Nigeria. But now that the prices have equalized with the ones in the neighboring countries, we're not seeing smuggling as much or as, as huge as it used to be or being profitable as it used to be. But of course, that is one part, and that's talking about other people in other countries. But here in Nigeria, we still cannot afford these petrol prices because as of today, um, NNPC is selling at 998 Naira in Lagos and 1,030 Naira in Abuja. But other fuel stations are selling above 1,000 Naira even in Lagos, and people have to buy for, I think, 1,050 Naira, thereabouts. So if you're going to talk about smuggling and saying, oh, people are smuggling it out of the country, how about the people who are living here who cannot afford this same um, product? What do you think about the, the current price of you know, fuel at the moment, of petrol, and the market forces, who is the NNPC, or obviously, who is determining this price? Okay, um, let me start first from the subsidy remover that um, has stopped the percentage of smuggling in Nigeria to the barest minimum. Mm. Before now, we used to have data from NNPC that states um, the particular number of um, fuel PMS has been consumed in the north. And looking at it, in reality, we notice most of those floors are not even being utilized for use to the north. Neighboring countries are the one benefiting from this fall, thereby petrol marketers, petrol marketers, is more profitable for them to take the fall outside Nigeria to sell because of the margin. Uh, from the reliable source, if you take a tanker to Sudan, because Nigeria will travel as far as Sudan, a North African country, you don't even need to worry about the cost of the tanker. You don't need to take it back to Nigeria. You leave it there because you have made a lot of money. And what is the multiplier effect of this in the economy? One, there's going to be scarcity. There's going to be shortage of wealth. And Nigeria will continue to pay for this subsidy for other neighboring countries to benefit from them. Just like the president of the country said, I think on the 9th of June, while addressing some rural, some rural um, leaders, kings, and said, Nigeria is no longer a father Christmas. There are a lot of issues faced with the Nigerian energy sector, which I believe the subsidy remover has saved one, as a subsidy remover has solved one, because there's no need as a major marketer for me to take my flow across the board because I'm still going to sell at almost the same rate. Then um, for your question, for your second question about the price of oil market forces, mm. whether we like it or not, the energy sector is going through a lot of transition. 
Let me start with that of uh, NNPC. If you notice, NNPC has now been um, commercialized. They are not just playing the role of uh, they are not just playing the, the role of operator, but now they are also in market. And if you look around, you have more NNPC station trying to uh, trying to be active in the market. You now hear more of NNPC. We have more of their stations that shows there is active competition already. And you mentioned market forces. What are market forces? Market forces are elements in the market that will force competition and price will be reasonable for everybody. Even if it is a 1,013 um, era for now, or is 1,015 um, era in some parts of the country, the more the market is open, the more um, business people in the sector wants to make more money, automatically with time, it will reduce. And I heard um, there was a report that came um, yesterday about 1,000 CNG, um, 1 million CNG stations that will be built across the nation. So also with the introduction of CNG, with the introduction of alternative transport, with the introduction of rail lines, with time, the prices will go down. Mm. Okay, so Hypeman obviously is hopeful for a lesser price, and I'm sure that's what a lot of Nigerians want to hear. That's what we want to see, because we went from 186 naira pre-May 29 last year, and as of today, of course, we're talking over 1,000 naira buying this same product per litre. So, are you optimistic that there might just be a chance that everyone will be able to buy this for less than maybe a thousand naira or even maybe 500 and something naira as it was before the hike? Okay, um, yes, even less, lesser than that mm. because of the government plan which I mentioned and also with the introduction of. Uh, Dangote refinery, which I know they've started the agreement with Dangote to lift crude oil in Nigeria and refine it. Once that, um, once um, the party starts enforcing the contract, then definitely is going to reduce that because we are still seeing all these prices because this was a post month, which I believe with time to keep going down. And also, let's not forget that um, most of these things will be done in Naira, to be transacted in Naira, so we won't have a um, forex effect. And one thing I can also assure us is fine. It might be expensive, but the accessibility is there. We can tell that um, with this program, the poor will be accessible, but the question is now, does the people have the capacity or the manpower to purchase this product? But with time, with time, with the, with the government incentive also, as I heard for commercial transport, this will be done for free or at a reasonable cost for them to do their conversion from petroleum to CNG. So I think the intention of this government is also not to solely rely on um, on PMS before the end of next year or let's say by the first quarter of next year, we have um, more vehicles running on CNG. So with this, I think marketers and uh, marketers are people in the sector will continue to think and see how they can encourage people to buy because the government is creating a, a, a big competition mm. on making sure that um, the country is not solely relying on on PMS. And not just PMS, not just um, compressed natural gas. There is also GTL, which is gas to liquid. Um, there is also raw natural gas on form. Also trying to, if you ask, there is um, a lot of electricity, a lot of power and you're compared to what it used to be. So the government is also encouraging people, once they steady power, people can also look at the option of having an electric car. So, so with that, there's going to be a paradigm shift from just PMS, PMS. Mm. So, okay, so I mean, yes, yeah, so there was a few things you I mentioned. Mean, 
right now. Yeah, so a few things you mentioned was one, you know, we would see these products, but I'm sure a lot of people are saying uh, there's still scarcity. In fact, I think um, a few days ago, there was also scarcity in Lagos as well, and I'm sure other parts of the country. So another thing you mentioned, obviously, was electric cars. And most people will be thinking, how about we don't even have stable power? Last night, the national grid did collapse at about 6.48 p.m. And as of right now, we've not really seen anything that's been done and national grid collapses almost every time so with all of these things that's happening in the country even if we want to transition into cng electric cars and all of that how is that really going to happen and I, I i think we should just even end here the impact of this product the price of these products obviously has an effect on our economy how do you see the transition process and what's going to happen from now till all of these policies are going to yield fruits for nigerians okay um i think we need to acknowledge the fact that we are coming from somewhere mm -hmm. we're coming from somewhere and now at this stage there are so there are pros, there are cons, and there will always be um, implication, both financial and economic implication, from any decision that is taken from the top. What I can assure Nigerians, if all these policies are fully affected, especially from the power sector, um, since there is now, from the beginning of this administration, before now, we used to have electricity in um, in the exclusive list just for the federal government. But now, there's now a bill that says, you know what? You don't have to send your power to the national can generate and also sell within your state. I think some states are doing that. Abia State is doing that. Lagos State is doing that. Um, for um, I think for your state, they are also looking at the power. So there is a lot of investment. So with with time, more states will no longer um, depend on on the national grid. It's just like that for now. But like I said, it's a transition. We look at where we are coming from and where we are. We can see um, progress, even though we are not seeing the initial progress now. When the Chinese government tried to do this at first, I think they used about 10 years from that transition. And look at them, look at them today. So I think a whole lot is going on concerning the, the power sector. I'm an um, energy expert, and I'm even surprised with the level of speed that is um, going on in the power sector. And apart from this um, grid that is collapsed now, Nigerians can boldly tell you that we have more power, steady power for their usage compared to before. So the question now is, how can they assess this All right. because, of, uh, because of the cost? But with that, that would be said, but it's one issue at so State right. government can have power, they don't look at depend on trade. So you hold your governors accountable. Mm. All right, thank you so much for that. Um, this is where we have to wrap it up here, but we want to say thank yeah. you so much for coming. Thank you, thank you. All right, have a nice day. Um, well, we've just been talking about the petrol supply and our guests have been sharing his thoughts. But we want to say thank you for coming and thank you for having a breakfast with us this morning. This is where we have to wrap it up on the show today. My name is Rome Paulson. It's always a pleasure having you here. But we'll see you again tomorrow and I want to wish you an amazing day.